There is one thing that all of us in this room and even those who are watching or will watch this later have in common. It is the fact that all of us have or have had parents in our lives. If it were not for our parents, we wouldn't be here today, would we? No, all of us have to have parents in order for us to enter into this world. And so all of us have had or have parents in our lives, but the question is, how do we treat and how did we treat these individuals who brought us into this world and who raised us did we show them respect? Did we obey them? Did we honor them? If you think about what I've just said, some of you may, be stop, you may stop and think, no, wait a minute, Jeff. Hold on. I'm married now. I have my own family. I have my own children. I don't think I'm still supposed to obey my parents because wasn't it God himself who said, for this reason shall a man leave father and mother and cleave or be joined to his wife and the two become one flesh? And didn't Jesus quote that over in Matthew chapter 19 verse 5 when he was responding to a question by the religious rulers of his day concerning divorce and remarriage? And, and didn't Paul also quote that? Over in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31, when he was talking about Christ in the church. So I don't know that I need to necessarily obey them now because I'm, I'm a grown individual. I have my own family and I have my own responsibilities. There may be also some of you, and maybe even those who are watching this lesson, who might say, my parents don't deserve my respect. If you knew the way my parents treated me when I was growing up in their home, the last thing they deserve is my respect. Oh, I respect my mother, but I don't respect my father because my father left my mother when I was a child to raise us by herself. So yes, I respect my mother, but I don't respect my father. Or, and, and we can add other things to that. How can I obey my parents when they tell me to do things that I know are wrong you see not everyone grew up with the privileges that many of us have enjoyed that is a godly family with two parents who loved God and who honored God in their lives and so the question is how do I respond to those parents when they didn't adhere to the things that I see taught in Scripture. And the question that we may even be asking now is how am I as a Christian to respond to my parent or my parents in such a way as I remain faithful before God in my life? As you think about these questions, as you think about these various scenarios that I presented to you this morning, I want you to also consider your own example before your children. And here's why I say this. Regardless of where your parents are in their lives, your children are watching you to see how you treat your parents because what they're going to learn from your example is this is the way I am to treat you when I am a grown adult and you're older in age. Something to think about, isn't it? Because our children learn from us. They watch us. They pay attention to the way we treat our parents. And our goal as adults and as Christians is to respond to our parents in such a way that as our children watch our example, they will learn from that example and they will treat us in a good way because we've treated our parents in a good way. Now, some of you may also have listened to the passage that was read by Eric and I appreciate him having memorized that. But it starts with this word, children. Children. And some of us may stop and think, now wait a minute, that's for these little ones here today. 
That's for the teenagers in the audience. That doesn't apply to me. I'm not a child. Yes, you are. You're somebody's child. And even those of you who are older, what do you call that son or daughter who's a grown individual that's an adult with their own family now? That's still my baby. I've heard some of you mothers say that. It doesn't matter how old they are, that's still my baby. That's still my son. That's still the one I raised. So yeah, your parents still look at you as their children. And there's something we'll see here in just a moment, but as Paul uses this word, it isn't so much a reference to age as it is a reference to relationship. Relationship. No matter how old we are, we're still somebody's son or daughter. We're still their child. And we still have certain responsibilities that we have toward them. We are expected by God to honor our parents. So let's look at what Paul says in these three short verses because, as you know, our theme this year has been being the hands of Jesus. And as I've, I've talked about, as you see it on the screen, how can we be the hands of Jesus in our homes by honoring our parents? Because that's what, if we want to make a difference in this world, that is one place for us to start, is in our own homes and the way we treat those who God has placed over us in life. What does he say? Children, obey your parents in the Lord. What does it mean to obey your parents in the Lord? Well, first of all, consider that very first word, obey. You think, oh, I know, I've heard that word all my life. I know what it means. But let me tell you something that you may not know. In the original language, in the Greek from which it comes, it comes from actually a compound word. It's two words put together to make one word. The compound word in the Greek is hupokuo. You think, I know nothing about Greek, that means nothing to me, but bear with me for just a moment as you see before you. The hupo means under. It's a word that typically in the Greek means under. Kuo means to listen. So when you put it together, what is Paul saying? To listen under, literally, listen under your parents. What does that mean, to listen under our parents? It means that we truly try to listen. You see, obedience requires conscious listening on our part. If we don't hear what we're being told, how can we obey it? And so, how many times have those of us who now are adults, look back in our lives, how many times have we, do we remember our parents saying to us, are you listening to me? Or did you hear what I just said? I remember one time in my own life, many years ago, when I probably wasn't much older than some of these kids here, and I was busy glued to the television. Imagine that. And my mother had said something to me. I don't know what it was. All I do remember was my dad saying, did you hear what your mother said? I knew what that meant. That meant I better figure out what it was that mom had said and respond to it in an appropriate way. Because dad was asking me, are you listening to your mother? And I knew I had better be listening to my mother. You see, the idea is to truly listen so that we understand what's being said to us. And then we make every effort to try to obey that if it is possible. Now, that does not mean when Paul says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, it doesn't mean that we are to obey our parents if they ask us to do something that is morally wrong. Because we have an obligation to God that supersedes our obligation to our parents. So if it's morally wrong, if it goes against God's will, we can say, I can't do that. That's something that God says I should not do. Or something that goes against scripture or something that goes against our Christian conscience. Now we have to be careful in how we apply that. I remember years ago in a chapel service at Lipscomb. There was an older gentleman that stood up and he was a preacher, been preaching for years. I don't remember his name, but I remember him talking about taking scripture out of context. And I may have used this with you before. But he said, 
There was one time in the fall of the year, it was always the time when we'd go out and cut firewood. And for those of you that are young, yes, in years gone by, you had to cut firewood because you burned it in the wood stove or in the fireplace. That was the way you kept warm. We couldn't go to a thermostat on the wall and just make an adjustment. No, you had to put the fire in the stove. You had to clean out the ashes. There was a lot that went in it. And cutting wood was a part of that and busting that wood. And so his dad one Saturday morning came to him and said, Son, come with us. We're fixing to go in the woods to cut some wood. And he said, Dad, I can't do it this morning. He said, Why? He says, Because God tells me I'm not supposed to do that. And he said, What do you mean? Where does God tell you that you're not supposed to do that? And he said, Well, God said, or Jesus said, that whatsoever God has joined together, let not man put asunder. God joined that wood together, and I'm not supposed to put it asunder. He said, Dad didn't agree with that. It didn't work. So you see, there are times we cannot take Scripture and say, well, it goes against my Christian conscience if it is not what Scripture teaches. Paul's point is that we who are children are to obey our parents in the Lord. And what he means by that is in those areas where it is consistent with Christ and His Word. Is this the way God says we're to respond to our parents? Yes. Are these the things that God says we're to do? If it is, then we are to do it. What is our motivation for that? Paul says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Why? For this is right. It's only right that we obey our parents. Children, all of us, what God says is that it's right for us to obey our parents. Virtually every culture, every society recognizes that children are to be obedient to their parents. Culture is built upon that, that children are obedient to their parents. They respect and obey their parents. And when this is not present, what we find down through history is that societies began to decay. Just this morning, for those of us who were in the auditorium class, you may remember that one of the things that Vance did as he came to the end of the book of Rome, uh, chapter, first chapter of Romans, he was sharing with us things that God did, how he gave people over to different things because they refused to acknowledge him as God. They dismissed him. You know, one of the things that was evident of society, Paul said, when people dismiss God, if you look at Romans 1 verse 30, he says they are disobedient to their parents. When a society dismisses God, one of the things that becomes evident in that society is that children just, I don't care what mom and dad say, I'm going to do what I want. It's my life. Nobody's going to tell me how to live it. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, Paul includes that, that same phrase, disobedient to parents, in a list of things which he says will be found in the last days. It's when society is breaking down. Children are disobedient to parents. There's a sister passage to the one that we have here in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. It's found over in Colossians chapter 3. There in verse 20. And there what we find the apostle saying is children be obedient to your parents in all things. And he tells us why. He gives us another motivation. For this is well pleasing to the Lord. It pleases God when we are obedient to our parents. But that's not all Paul had to say. He said this. He said honor your father and your mother. What does that mean? To honor your father and your mother? Well, I'll tell you that in just a moment. But think about this. That statement. Is he saying, please do this? I wish you would do this. I hope that you will do this. No. No. That statement, honor your father and your mother, is a command. And in it, what he is saying is that you and I should obey our parents. And Paul even adds, it is the first commandment with a promise. In other words, it is God's command. God is saying, this is what I expect you to do. You are to honor your parents. When he says it's the first commandment with a promise, you go back to, he's going back to the Ten Commandments. 
You can go back to either Exodus chapter 20 verse 12 or you can go to Deuteronomy chapter 6 or 5 verse 16 and you find it in both places. It is this commandment that he has given to Israel through Moses. And what he says there is honor your father and your mother. Twice he had said this. Once when they were at Mount Sinai and then Paul, excuse me, Moses reiterates it when they're in the land of waiting of Moab, waiting to cross over into the promised land. Now, what does it mean? Honor your parents. I think most of us who are older understand that, but for those who are younger, let me tell you what it means. It means that we revere our parents. It means that we value them. And the way we treat them is an indication of the the extent that we value them. We attribute high status to them by showing them respect. Sometimes the best way to understand how something is to be done is to look at its opposite. And we see that in Mark chapter 7, where Jesus there gives us a negative example of this are not respecting parents. It's actually disrespect. What happens there in Mark chapter 7 is that some of the Pharisees and scribes have come up from Jerusalem. It seems they've come to Capernaum where Jesus is at and they're observing Jesus and his disciples. And they notice something that the disciples do not do. They notice there in verse 2 that some of the disciples of Jesus are eating with what they call impure hands. In other words, they did not ceremonially wash their hands before they ate their meal. This wasn't hygiene. This was something that the law, they had kind of added into the law. And so they asked Jesus about it. The question to Jesus is this, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat their food or their bread with impure hands. Verse 5. You know what Jesus did? He first of all said something to them that I'm sure did not set well. He called them hypocrites. Anybody ever called you a hypocrite? He called them hypocrites. And here's what he said. He said that Isaiah was right about you. When he prophesied, and he's speaking about a prophecy that Isaiah had made over 700 years earlier, he said Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you that this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they teach the commandments of, or teach as doctrine the commandments of men. You take things that men have made and you've elevated them to the position of a doctrine. As if this is what God has said. And then he said, you neglect the commandment of God while you hold to the tradition of men. And then listen to what he said in verse 9. He said, you are experts in setting aside the commandment of God in order to keep your tradition. You take God's commandment and you push it off to the side so that your tradition is what you're pushing everyone to follow. In reality, they had not just set aside one commandment of God, they had set aside two commandments of God. And Jesus tells them what those commandments were. There, he tells them, first of all, that they were setting aside, honor your father and mother, which is that first commandment with a promise that we talk about. But then secondly, it was something else. He who speaks evil of father and mother is to be put to death. And that comes from Exodus 20, verse 21, verse 17. And Leviticus chapter 20, verse 9. What Jesus said to them is this. He says, if a man says to his father or his mother, whatever I have that would help you is given to God. I'd love to help you, Mom. I'd love to take care of you, Dad, in your old age. But this money, this, this that I've earned, I've given it to God. I really can't do that for you because this belongs to God. So uh, you're just going to have to kind of fend for yourself. He said, you no longer permit that individual to do anything for his father or his mother. He said, you have invalidated the word of God by your tradition which you've handled, handed down. He says, you do many things like this. You hear what Jesus said to them? 
He said, you're not honoring your father and mother. Those of you who have aged parents, he says, you're not honoring your father and your mother because you're looking for excuses not to take care of them in their old age. According to Jesus, we all honor our parents in a positive way and in a negative way. We honor them in a positive way, or we should honor them in a positive way by seeing that their needs are cared for in their older age. In a negative way, we care for them, we honor them by making sure that we do not show them any disrespect in their older age or even anywhere along through their lives. So that, according to Jesus, is the way that we who are older and who have aging parents care for our parents. This is the way we honor our parents. We see that as they age, they're cared for. They're provided for. We make sure that we don't disrespect them. And Paul, or Jesus said, or excuse me, Paul said, there are some promises associated with this. Let's go back to it. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, with a promise. Well, what is the promise? That it may be well with you and that you may live long upon the earth. So really, it's a twofold promise. What's he saying? He says, if you take care of honoring your parents, two things. One, you're going to be able to live, your life is going to be well lived. Number two, your life is probably going to be long-lived. Now, all of us understand that there are some children who die at an early age and it has nothing to do with whether they obeyed or disobeyed their parents. There are other reasons that figure into that. But as a tendency, what Paul is saying is that we tend to live longer lives when we do honor our parents, when we do show them the respect that they deserve. Let me share with you something that Solomon wrote in the book of Proverbs. If you go to Proverbs chapter 1, there in verses 8 and 9, Solomon said this, he says, Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Indeed, they are a graceful wreath to your head and ornaments about your neck. Why is this true? Why does Paul say that the commandment that has a promise is that our lives may be well lived and long lived. And why does Solomon say that by respecting our parents they become a graceful wreath to our head and ornaments about our neck? There are some reasons for that. And young people, those of you that are in your teenage years or below, I hope you'll listen to these three reasons that I want to share with you this morning. The first of those is this. When we obey our parents, we find that we will regularly be warned against the dangers which are before us in life. And here's what I mean. Every one of us who are older, young people, every one of us who are older have experienced things in our lives, some of them because we didn't listen to our parents, some of them because our parents had never experienced them, and we did, but we experienced dangers in our lives, physical dangers in our lives, because of poor choices that we may have made. We learn from that, hopefully, and we're trying to pass that wisdom on to you so that you don't experience those things. Maybe it didn't happen to us. Maybe it happened to one of our close friends. And I'm sure that every one of us in this audience can tell a story about a close friend who suffered some severe injury because of poor choices in his or her life. We are trying to spare you the anguish of experiencing that in your life. We're trying through the wisdom that we have gleaned over the years to help you live a life that will be as pain-free as possible. Now, please understand there, are no, there is no such thing as a pain-free life. All of us are going to experience some pain in life, but we want to try to prevent that as much as possible. A second reason why this is true is because by listening to our parents and obeying them, honoring them, we are spared the bad habits and the bad friendships which tend to shorten our lives.
give you a passage to go along with that. If you look at Psalm chapter, or Psalm 1, not chapter 1, Psalm 1. The psalmist there begins that psalm with these words. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers or the scornful. What he's saying is something that Paul will say over in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Evil companionship corrupts good morals. You may have the best of intentions, but young people, if you link your lives to those whose lives are not what they should be, they will more likely drag you away than sometimes you are able to pull them up. And so your parents may say, they may say to some of you young men when you decide to begin dating, that is not a good young lady for you to date. Or you may say to your daughters, men, that is not a good young man for you to have in your life. I would recommend you not. I forbid you to see him. Is probably more of what a father might say. Why is that father saying that? Because he just doesn't like boys? No, it's because he is a boy himself, though he's now a man. He knows how young men think, and he knows some things that you may not know, young ladies. And your mother's young men know the same thing, too, about the ladies, the young ladies, for their sons. So bad habits, bad relationships. If we listen to our parents, we may save ourselves a good deal of grief as we're growing up. The third thing is this. When we obey and honor our parents, we're more likely to develop those healthy character traits in our lives, things that will stand by us, things that will support us as we age in life. I'll give you a couple of passages that support that. One is found in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 10. Solomon said, Hear, my son, and accept the sayings, and the years of your life will be many. If you'll listen, then you'll have things in your life that you do that are right, and you'll be able to live a longer life because of it. Proverbs 10, verse 27, The fear of the Lord prolongs life, but the years of the wicked, he says, will be shortened. Fear God. Keep His commandments. He would later say at the end of Ecclesiastes, why? Because this is the whole duty of man. He understood. That's what we need to be doing. But then there's the other side of the coin. Solomon also said, actually one from Solomon, it was from another one, but in Proverbs 30, verse 17, the eye that mocks a father and scorns a mother, the ravens of the valley will pluck it out and the young eagles will eat it. Oh, that's a graphic picture that I don't even like to think about but what what this mother is saying to her son is listen if you if you are disrespectful of your parents somewhere down the road you're going to pay for it somewhere down the road it's going to come back as we often say to bite you to hurt you so why is it so important because it's the first commandment of God with a promise that it may be well with you that you may live long upon the earth and that's what we want for you, young people. And that's what those of us who are older are still striving for in our own lives by showing respect to our parents and honoring them. So what is it that we're to take away from this as we think about being the hands of Jesus and honoring our parents? It's this. It's what I began with, part of it anyway. If you are a parent, and you still have living parents of your own, continue to honor them even if they may not have been the best of parents for you, but treat them in such a way that as your children watch you, they see a respect that is there and a concern that is there, even though it may not have been earned. And they will show you that same concern, that same respect, because they have seen it in your life and they want to emulate you. If you are a parent with small children, Please make sure that you're living your life in such a way that your children have somebody they can emulate and they want to obey. And those of you that are teenagers and below, watch your parents. Listen to them. Learn from them. Use every opportunity that you have to take from the wisdom that God has granted to them and, and apply it in your own lives. And then I promise you, you won't face some of the heartaches that some of us faced in our lives. You'll be protected from that to a great extent. And your life will be well lived. We live in a world 
where it seems so much of what we mentioned before from Romans 1, 30, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 20 is true. Where children are disobedient to their parents, but where do people learn how to treat parents? It's got to come from us, folks. It has to come from God's people who are living it out in their own lives. The world does not have a good example if it's not the example of God's people living that out as a daily pattern in their own lives. If you're not doing that, if you find that you have faltered in the area of honoring your parents or in obeying your parents or in respecting your parents, God offers you a forgiveness. He offers to take away that sin in your life and help you once again to restore that relationship and to be the person that you need to be. And I want to encourage you to do that. It may not be something that the rest of us know about. It may simply be between you and a parent, but go and make it right. Go and try to correct the situation and be the child, the son or the daughter that God wants you to be. And if you are a person here today who's not yet given your life in obedient faith to Christ, know that Christ wants to be in your life and he can make your life better because he's in it. And your marriage can be better and your parenting can be better all because of who is actually in control of your life. So if you need to respond to him in obedient faith, if you need to turn your life back to him or turn it over to him to begin with, confessing his name before this body of Christians, repenting of your sin, being buried with him in baptism, then we invite you. Won't you please come right now as together we stand and stand.